Welcome back. Let us look at uh, the frequency domain filtering for image enhancement. In spatial domain, we have directly taken, you know, worked with, we have directly worked with the image. We have uh, manipulated uh, the pixel values directly. In frequency domain filtering, what we do, we take, uh, you know, we do some pre-processing and then we take the Fourier transform of the image and then apply, multiply it with the corresponding uh, filter and take the inverse transform, the post-processing and come back, get the enhanced image. Yeah, this pre-processing and post-processing are uh, um, mostly not related to the frequency domain filtering, but this is what we are interested in. Take the Fourier transform, multiply it with the corresponding uh, filter uh, transfer function, then take the inverse transform. Why I am multiplying here? Because the convolution in spatial domain is filtering, right? We have done that. And then, uh, you know, in, when, when I move to the frequency domain, that convolution becomes multiplication. So, move on. So this is showing you an ideal, the frequency response of an ideal low pass filter. This is along uh, the x direction and this is along, I mean to say, the frequency along x direction and this is frequency along y direction, u and v. If value, if uh, the frequency components are inside this ring, square root of uh, u square plus v square is less than or equal to some d naught, then Keep uh, the frequency component, uh, you know, uh, keep it as it is. I mean to say, multiply it with uh, uh, 1 and then uh, if it is greater than d naught, if square root of u square plus v square is greater than or equal to d naught, then multiply it with 0. So it is uh, a short transition that we have here. If it is low frequency, which means that square root of u square plus v square less than or equal to d naught, keep it. it Keep it as it is. Keep the value of uh, uh, f of u comma v as it is. Otherwise, simply make it zero. This is ideal low pass filtering. This is uh, you know the spectrum and uh, the circles that are shown here are with uh, different cutoff frequencies. This is the image corresponding spectrum, and this is I think corresponding to d not equal to five. This is corresponding to d not equal to 15, d not equal to 30, 80. I think we missed it somewhere. Uh, d not equal to 5, maybe there's another ring here. Then 15, 30, 80, and 230. So, uh, yeah. Point is, how do we decide these thresholds? We decide these thresholds based on uh, the amount of energy that we want to retain. So, this is... Uh, you know, that is how we can uh, find out uh, the threshold D naught. How much amount of energy that I want to retain and how much uh, energy that I want to remove. What is the con energy content that I can allow in the high frequencies? That is how we will decide uh, the value of the threshold. So, let's see what happens if uh, the threshold is uh, uh, go on uh, decreasing. If, the, if I'm taking D naught equal to 230, let us say, then obviously more and more high frequencies are uh, allowed here. As more and more high frequencies are allowed, the output image will almost look like the original image because almost all the frequencies are considering, considered, retained. If the cutoff frequency is reduced, meaning that if D0 value is small, then more and more frequencies are getting reduced, you know, getting removed. As more and more frequencies are getting removed, the image will have you know more and more high frequencies removed then more blur is going to occur so as the cutoff frequency is reduced more and more as the value of d naught is uh, getting small the image will get more blurred this is what i am trying to tell you so this is i think d naught equal to 5 15 30 80 and 230 you can see 230 D0 equal to 230 is almost the uh, same as the original image and D0 equal to 5, it, the entire image got blood because uh, all the high frequencies components got removed. But uh, uh, there is one interesting uh, fact that I want you to uh, understand here. Is there any relation between uh, the mask size that we have uh, seen in spatial filtering and the cutoff frequency that we have seen here? 
let us say uh, the mask size is increasing in the case of spatial domain. As the mask size is increasing in spatial domain, uh, the mask, you know, uh, the cutoff frequency corresponding to the mask in the frequency domain, it is going to decrease. It is just like this. I have a rectangle, I have a gate function whose width is, if it is increasing, the sync function in the frequency domain is going to, the width is going to reduce. If the rectangle width is increasing, the sync function width is going to reduce. If the rectangular function it is decreasing, the width is decreasing, then the sync function is going to increase. It is the same way. If the mask is in spatial domain, it is increasing, the, the cutoff frequency in the frequency domain it is going to reduce. If the mask size is decreasing as it is becoming a point processing, then what is going to happen? This is going to, the cutoff frequency is going to increase. So, this you have to understand. One more thing I want you to see and understand. Uh, here you can see some ring structured, uh, uh, some ring structures along the edges. This is happening because uh, we, we have a ideal low pass filter which is having a short cut of uh, frequency. So, it is like a rectangular function that we have uh, in uh, a sharp transition in the uh, frequency domain means uh, the, it, it is convolving uh, with the sync function in the spatial domain. When we convolve with the sync function in the spatial domain, you can see there is a, in the sync function you can see there is a hill and then there is a valley, there is a hill and then there is a valley. So, we are convolving uh, the original uh, image with uh, this sort of uh, mask where there is a uh, bright region and then there is a dark region and then there is a bright region. That is why there is, so, there is sort of ring structures happening here. It is It happens only in uh, ideal low pass filter because of the short cut of frequency. And here the ringing effect clear, can be clearly explained because we are observing rings. This is called as ringing effect. This is uh, uh, for denote equal to 5. This is the corresponding uh, uh, frequency response of the filter. And the corresponding uh, spatial response, impulse response, this is what we have. The impulse response of the filter, you can see it is clearly a sync function. The output image is nothing but convolution of uh, the original image with this sync function. Let us consider this is the input image. The input image is being convolved with the, convolved with the sync function. That is why you can see at these points, uh, it, it got, uh, you know, valleys and then... Uh, you know, uh, the ring structures uh, that are formed. It is because of uh, sharp cutoff frequency, we have uh, impulse response to the sync function and when we convolve it with sync function, we observe these rings because of the structure of the sync function. And the next thing is, uh, in order to avoid uh, this sort of uh, rings, uh, what we will do, instead of taking sharp cutoff frequency, we will take uh, the cutoff, you know, a gradual change uh, from pass band region to uh, the stop band region. A very good example of this is a Butterworth filter. So, a Butterworth filter you can see here uh, there is not a, uh, the sharp cutoff frequency, the sharp transition is replaced with a gradual transition here. This is the gradual transition I am talking about. Uh, but as the order is increasing, uh, this Butterworth filter is going to move towards a ideal filter. So, this is a Butterworth filter for you and as I said, as the cutoff frequency is decreasing, you will have more and more blur. But important point is that you don't have a ringing effect here. Uh, this is the impulse response of the Butterworth filter for uh, uh, different order of the filters. So, for uh, uh, the first order filter, you don't have any ring here. For the second order filter, you don't have any ring. The order is increasing. We know that uh, the Butterworth filter is going to move towards uh, the ideal filter. Hence, uh, we'll have uh, you know you can observe the rings as the order of the you can observe the ringing effect uh, as the order of the Butterworth filter is increasing. So, in order to even remove this also, let us move to the most uh, you know uh, most popular filter, which is the Gaussian filter, Gaussian low pass filter. Gaussian filter as the as we move away from the center uh, frequency, uh, you know, h of u comma v is going to uh, decrease and the transition is very smooth here. So, you will not observe any sort of a ringing effect here. 
uh, I, I, I told you already the low pass filter can be uh, used to remove the leakages in the letters in document processing. So this is the example of it. You can see uh, this with the different cutoff frequency Gaussian filter. You can see that as the cutoff frequency is reduced, uh, there is uh, a blur is going to happen and there is no ringing effect again here. This is uh, uh, another example where uh, you know this lady uh, has some uh, wrinkles around the eye. So when we do Gaussian uh, low pass filter filtering, you can see that uh, more and more blur is going to happen, and then uh, the wrinkles are going to get removed, and she looks more beautiful uh, than the previous uh, maze. Okay, uh, high pass filter it is simply one minus uh, the frequency response of the low pass filter. So it's simply the inverted case of it. Earlier this is uh, entire uh, black, you know, black region, and this is white region. Now it is the other way. Uh, see all the three cases: the Gaussian case, uh, ideal filter case, and then the Butterworth filter case. So uh, this is the ideal uh, high pass filter. This is uh, for the Butterworth, and this is for the Gaussian case. And the corresponding uh, spatial representations are shown here. This is the Spatial representation of uh, the ideal filter. This is the spatial representation of the Butterworth filter, and this is the spatial representation of the Gaussian filter. You can see that the uh, ringing effect will again come here as well because uh, it, it is simply convolving it with the uh, again a, another sort of a sync function here and here as well. But in Gaussian, again, Gaussian, the uh, Fourier transform of Gaussian is Gaussian, so we'll get back uh, a Gaussian here, so there will not be any ringing effect here. Uh, this is the uh, high, ideal high pass filter. And you can see this is uh, this is the ideal high pass filter for you. You can uh, see that uh, uh, that uh, ringing effect uh, still present here also. That is because uh, uh, this is having a sharp cut off frequency again. Uh, this is with different cut off frequencies if you see, and uh, as the cut off frequency is increasing, more and more low frequencies are getting removed. As more and more low frequencies are getting removed. Uh, you will see more sharpened uh, sharpen edges. So more and more sharpening is going to happen. And the next thing is Gaussian high pass filter. There is no ringing effect here. That is the first observation. And the second thing is that as the high, as the uh, cutoff frequency is increasing, uh, you can see more sharpening happening. This is for the Butterworth case. And uh, that will be uh, 